Hi, I'm Sunny and I'm an Azure Cloud Engineer and in this episode, I'm going to use my Terraform skills to build an AWS lab. So wish me luck. So welcome back to the channel. If you caught my last video, I showed you how to build an Azure lab with Terraform. Um, it was a good introduction to Terraform and anyone wanting to learn infrastructure as code. I spoke about multi-cloud and the benefits of learning a universal language across clouds, such as HashiCorp configuration language, also known as HCL. So I thought it'd be a fun experiment to see if I can use my Terraform skills to build an AWS lab. I've had limited exposure to AWS. Um, I, I know basic concepts. I've deployed some test EC2 instances some time ago via the console, and that's probably about it. So before we get started, obviously you need an AWS account, you need a private and public key pair, and you need Terraform itself. Um, I'll have all the code in GitHub again, as well as scripts to help you get, get you started. We start by going to registry.terraform.io. Uh, this will basically show you the providers. And if you look under feature providers, you'll have AWS. Um, so this will take you to the AWS provider. If you click on documentation here, you'll see that it shows you examples. If you just click on authentication, it shows you the bare minimum you need to declare this provider. So you need to specify a region, an access key and a secret key. So if we just copy this and we just create a, I'm just gonna create a main.tf um, just to run through this example. So uh, what else I discovered is if you go to the AWS console and just go under IAM uh, and you go to users, you see I already have an account. Um, I'm, I've actually already run this um, just to save time, but we'll create a new user. We'll just call this Terraform. And you need to tick uh, this option, which is uh, pro programmatic access, I can never pronounce that, um, which will use basically an access key and a secret key. And I figured out that the default permission um, named administrator access is similar to contribute access on the account. And then basically just let that finish. So create user. And this will give you basically a access key and a secret. So if we go to the provider, and we just fill out these details. And that's pretty much it. So that's, uh, that's the AWS provider setup. So we'll move ahead. And so <clears throat> in episode four, uh, I built a lab which consisted of multiple resource groups, virtual machines, uh, log analytics workspaces, configuring the MMA agents, creating some st uh, storage accounts. Um, so I'm basically going to try and mimic that. If you look here, if we look for um, an AWS instance, which is an EC2 instance, uh, pretty much a VM, you'll see that the example shows you that it does a AWS underscore Amy lookup. Um, Amy being, uh, I think it's Amazon machine image. Um, and it's labeled as Ubuntu. Um, so you can see here that it's doing a, a text string filter and it looks like it's going to grab uh, the latest Ubuntu image. And then it basically just has a virtualization type. Um, and then the owners, which is a number for um, Canonical, which are the they are the creators of, of Ubuntu. I, I believe you can also use Amazon um, and other things. Um, I think Microsoft is also acceptable. And then you can see here, you're just declaring a AWS instance um, and it's gonna basically use that data lookup and then uh, give it an instance type, which is a T3 micro, which I think is a free tier. Um, and then basically set a tag. So, so I learned that in AWS, tags are used a bit differently. Instances have randomly generated numbers. So there's no dependency on a resource name and tags, specifically the name tag, is used to declare or, or give all your resources a name. So this um, this instance was, is gonna be labeled hello world. But if we dig a bit further, you see that um, this example shows you how to build out an entire environment. So 
So basically you can see we're going to create a VPC, um, which is, I think, mm, virtual private cloud. Um, technically, it's like a resource group is my understanding. And you can see here there's a CIDR block. Um, and this is actually like creating a virtual network. Um, and then you can see it gives it a name. So that VPC is going to have a name. And then you've got this AWS uh, subnet. So obviously it's going to create a subnet in that VPC slash VNet as well. Um, and then it's going to give it a tag as well. Uh, and then we're going to create an AWS network interface. And you can see here that it's going to basically uh, um, assign that ne network interface into the subnet above. Uh, and it's going to give it a name, primary network interface, and then you're creating a VM, which is also going to associate that network card or network interface. So as you can see, if I just follow that example, that's actually going to build out um, pretty much the entire um, lab for one side, um, for one region, let's say. Um, and it's that straightforward. So, so technically, I didn't need to know what a VPC was, um, but I, I do have basic concepts and, you know, everyone knows what a subnet is if you work in Azure and a network interface and an instance. Um, so pretty much what I'll do is I'm going to copy this uh, data lookup and then, and then I'm going to copy the bottom part of the VPC and the entire VM block. So the entire example. So if I copy this, um, but what I need to do is reference this data lookup, which is called data dot, uh, let me type that actually, actually. So this Amy here. So if I just copy this, I know that the reference for this object is going to be, so obviously I, I know this ahead of time. So it's going to be data dot AWS underscore Amy dot Ubuntu, and then it's going to be dot ID. Um, so obviously if we go, you can see, I think I've got AWS Amy open. If you go look at the, the where is it? The attributes, I believe, attribute references. You can see here that it's going to give me the ID. Um, so if I, yep. So, so pretty much if I was to build this, let, let me do that. If I do a Terraform init, I'm going to initialize it. It's going to download the provider. Um, so we'll just let this go. So, I mean, without any sort of real knowledge, I know all the components I need to actually build a virtual machine uh, and it takes it to the next level with the other example of the VPC subnet network interface. So if I do a te Terraform plan, so I have an alias called TF, just uh, so I don't have to type Terraform all the time and it just points to my Terraform.exe. If I do a plan, and I expand this out, you can see that I'm going to build a new AWS instance uh, and we're just going to call it foo but you can see that's grabbed the Amy so that means that data lookup worked for the latest Ubuntu image um, it's going to basically assign an instance type um, and then it's gonna let's see it's gonna create a AWS network interface and then it's gonna assign the IP address within that subnet as defined, it's going to give it a name, primary network interface. Uh, it's going to create a new subnet, um, obviously in the region specified as well as the subnet. Uh, where's the VPC? 12 seconds later. Okay. Hmm. So there's a VPC there. I don't know what that was about. So as you can see, that is pretty much going to build me a skeleton of what I need. Um, now, I'm actually not going to spend the time to to figure out all the other bits. Um, I have already figured out the other bits. So obviously with the help of Google, um, I discovered all the things that I needed to do. So of tears later. So what I've done is I've already deployed code, which is obviously on GitHub as well. Um, and these are the challenges that I had that I had to fill in the gaps. Um, so with the VPC, um, I discovered that uh, basically I needed an internet gateway uh, to actually reach my virtual machine. So an internet gateway um, allows you to route traffic from a VPC outbound. Um, so I basically had to create a AWS uh, internet gateway, which I just declared a resource. Um, I needed to create a, a route table. Um, that was a tricky one because um, 
when I created the internet gateway, I just assumed it was going to work because uh, I had to do something else, which was I had to give my virtual machine an elastic IP. And funny enough, you know, elastic IP um, you know, is a uh, apparently a public interface. Um, so, so once I figured out the route table, so I had to route all my traffic outbound to the internet gateway. Um, and then also another problem was I had to set it as the main route table. Um, seems like the default route would override, which I guess makes sense. Um, other challenges was um, I had to create security groups. So they're like NSGs or NSG rules as well. Um, had to open up WinRM, which is a management port, as well as RDP. Um, and then secondly, I, I basically created an S3 bucket. So you can see here. Um, so the next thing was I outputted the admin password of the server. So it turns out, um, you need the private key pairs, um, so you can decrypt the password. So you can see here, I'm using this RSA decrypt and, um, I'm, I had to enable a flag in the EC2 instance to actually, um, make the password available. And then I had to use my, uh, private key to decrypt. Um, so yeah, that was a challenge as well. Um, I've obviously added my public key as well. Um, I don't think I did anything specific here. I just created a locals file so it contained everything. So I was randomly generating uh, pet name and then um, shuffling locations, um, which I don't know if I'm using the locations to be honest. I just put it in from my code from before because I've got two regions here because um, I needed it to align. So I'm actually not using that. I'll probably take that out. Um, I've also learned that um, I tried to set up the CloudWatch agent, so try to mimic the MMA agent to do logging, um, and SSM just uh, in case I wanted to to use um, you know similar functions to the the Azure um, guest agent to do management tasks. Um, so I figured out that I needed to assign policies. Um, so you know there was examples on the internet of this, and it just taught, showed you the raw formats. So I had to add that. Uh, the EC2 instance, um, so as you can see, I built Windows because um, I, I discovered everything in Azure, is, uh, not Azure. Um, Amazon is very specific to Linux, um, so I thought I'd make it a bit more challenging to use Windows. Um, so there wasn't many challenges, um, but the, the CloudWatch agent was a bit trickier. Um, so I've added the key pair here. Um, so you've got to create a key pair so you can decrypt the admin password, as, as mentioned. Um, I, I figured out that network interfaces, you need to assign the security groups to the network interface itself, not the EC2 instance. Um, I was originally trying to put it into the EC2 instance and I didn't like that. Uh, neither the Elastic IP, um, you know, the fancy names for a public IP address. Um, this was just so I could uh, connect to it. Uh, and then you can see here, so I'm using the data lookup, um, using the free tier, adding the key names with the key pairs. Uh, this get password underscore data is a requirement. You need to set that to true so you can actually retrieve it. Um, I think this connection option, um, I think it actually extracts the password. Uh, I don't know. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so basically it's looking out, looking up the password and then it's decrypting it using my private key. Uh, just assigning the network network interface. And this is the, the user data um, specific um, function that I found. So user data is a common AWS um, configuration option, I guess, to allow you to run scripts um, at launch time. Um, so I found... There was a CloudWatch agent, but it seemed like it was quite tailored for Linux, um, so it got tricky. So I actually found a PowerShell script um, and then figured out how to run it inside the virtual machine. Um, so you can see here that that goes to scripts. I've got scripts here, and it's pretty much just a PowerShell script, which will um, download the agent from Amazon. Um, and then it also downloads a Windows default config from Amazon. Um, yeah, so I've already run this, as you can see here. Um, didn't take too long to run. Um, 22 added. So there you go. You can see that Terraform definitely helped break down the walls. Um, so I, I had a roadmap on what I needed to build um, just using Terraform examples. 
obviously, there were um, unique configuration requirements that I needed, such as the internet gateway, the route table, and the Elastic IP. Um, so Google helped fill those in. Um, the CloudWatch agent was a tricky one, but once I found a PowerShell script, um, that was pretty straightforward in itself. So at the end of the day, just remember that technology can always be learnt. Uh, you just need to have an open mind towards technology and the right attitude to learn and develop yourself. So stay tuned. I'll be making a whole bunch of videos in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget, we are also available on all major podcasting platforms for the audio only version. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and I'm signing out. See ya. Boo, 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 boo.